So I just wanted to, you know, talk about a few of our international projects. So, so we, uh, since we obviously we started in Iceland, uh, we, uh, we, uh, 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 in 2012, we won a European Eat Democracy Award that sort of got us a bit on the map. And we've done projects in over 20 countries, and I'm just going to talk about very, very few of them. But the Scottish Parliament has been using your priorities as a part of their engagement platform, and uh, for now we're one and a half years. And they've done projects on crowdsourcing solutions to community well-being, debating a new civil partnership bill on climate change policy. And now just in the past few weeks, they've been running a COVID-19 citizens panel, which is in a closed environment only for the participants. So there are 25 in the panel and plus uh, other projects. Just uh, some screenshots from the uh, community well-being project uh, from uh, uh, the climate change project they're, they're running. And you say it's, it's uh, you know, same platform, uh, same features, sort of repeated over and over again. But they got really good discussions on many subjects, including on, on climate change, uh, some really valuable feedback for their committee work. Uh, so the Engage uh, platform at the Scottish Parliament is mainly uh, designed to be an extension of the committees, uh, where the committees use uh, this channel to uh, get feedback as they're preparing law proposals and so on. And uh, and uh, uh, and this is an example of uh, like a debate over two screens about uh, banned cyclists from public roads. You know that's a classic thing uh, that people uh, wanna you know debate about. And uh, and uh, and in this case, there was actually more people who uh, who voted this down or or not. Um, in, in, in 2012-2013, uh, uh, your priorities was uh, used, uh, you know, by, uh, yeah, actually, uh, you know, you know, Christina probably knows a little bit about this project as well, but, uh, but the open source system was used as a part of a project uh, called People's Assembly, where uh, over 50,000 people uh, visited the website and sent in uh, close to 2,000 proposals. And, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to go through this whole process. It's a really interesting project. I, I suggest we, we have a little uh, a paper on it that's written by uh, by the Citizen Foundation, by Gunnar and and uh, and some people involved in this project on this in on the Estonian side. And this was the platform in 2013. It was all a, a bit more, you know, text based uh, back in the day. This was before it became a, a you know mobile web app. Um, Multi-City Challenge Africa is a project we helped uh, UNTP and the GovLab in the US with to uh, in, run in five cities in Africa uh, to, uh, to uh, look at uh, uh, solutions to uh, pressing public problems. And the, the three topics uh, are reducing waste, urban resilience, and integrating the informal economy. And we had uh, tens of thousands of people uh, uh, participated in this. And uh, you know, added ideas about uh, you know really a lot of uh, creative ideas. And uh, and in this case, there was no voting up or down, but people could rate the ideas so on two uh, on two different scales, like with a Likert scale. And uh, and uh, you know, there was a healthy debate in you know from from many countries. You know, it's, yeah, five cities in in, in three countries. Um, it's a bit of a whirlwind tour, you know, so say you can look at the presentation, you know, later on, but uh, I just want to tell you about a few projects. This is a project from a political party, like a center-right party in Malta, that's used this, used the platform as a part of their, uh, you know, campaign of their, uh, it was a snap election, they used the, you know, platform as a, you know, part of the campaign. Uh, really interesting, uh, you know, some real policy platform changes, uh, you know, became, you know, were, you know, came about because of the platform, including uh, the, the party's stand on, on gay marriage. So say it's like a conservative party, a center-right party in Malta. And, uh, but a lot of people participated with, uh, you know, thousands of ideas and, and, uh, and it was really, uh, you know, helpful for the campaign. Uh, we worked with the British Council uh, to set up a, um, a crowdsourcing platform for uh, in, in Sudan as a part of a back to school campaign in Sudan, how to make teaching safe and you know in in times of COVID-19 and uh, you know there both people were sharing stories about the uh, uh, ways of you know keeping schools going uh, you know during the pandemic and uh, and also there was an you know section uh, that was asking you know asking for you know what sort of supplies uh, you know schools would need like masks and things like that so it was a bit of an organizational tool as well um, and then 
so finally on those big projects, uh, uh, World Bank, we've been working with the World Bank now for uh, uh, a year and a half and uh, we've done successful projects with them in, 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 in Kosovo, Kyrgyz Republic and uh, some other plans. So the World Bank is, you know, kind of an interesting situation. So when they offer a loan to a government, citizen engagement is an integral part of the loan agreement. So there's no ifs or buts, you know, a government that receives a loan from the World Bank, they have to have, uh, it, you know, citizen engagement to its highest possible standard. You know, there's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Simon, your question about if, uh, if uh, in terms of uh, how well monitored and, and researched uh, those projects were with the World Bank is, is a total absolute, uh, you know, they, uh, they have a total view on uh, what the projects are doing. And, you know, before, uh, you know, those sort of projects have been done on, you know, often in, you know, in collaboration with civil society, it's still being done in collaboration with civil society, but often basically that there's a meeting room or a hotel uh, or a hotel business suite, uh, you know, rented, and then a government uh, comes in, uh, represented from civil society, and then people sit around, and that's the citizen engagement, you know, classic sort of on the ground citizen engagement. Uh, all sorts of different really good processes that have been developed over the years in terms of online, how to get the best, most out of those sort of online events. And, uh, but now in uh, collaboration with us, they've been looking at, uh, uh, and became critical last year when COVID hit, to move some of those processes uh, uh, online to reach more people. This is an example from, uh, 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 from the, uh, I'm going to turn it into English. This is the, the Kyrgyz Republic Iris online platform. And basically the World Bank has many different projects with, uh, with the Kyrgyz Republic, including the CASA 1000, which is a, a giant tele, you know, electric, electricity line that's going through all of Central Asia. And a lot of villages are going to be, have to be moved and so on. And they have uh, other, uh, they have a rural water supply project, a heat supply improvement project, and a village investment project. And they're basically managing all the participation for 7,000 villages, uh, you know, using our platform and in collaboration with uh, the, the, the Kyrgyz government. And, um, you know, here's just an example. And we have uh, had over 70,000 people have uh, participated already in all, all sorts of different villages. It's very sort of, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of villages, you know, that are participating. And the World Bank has created a, a unique WhatsApp uh, system where they use WhatsApp, which is very popular in talking about Facebook, and they, you know, WhatsApp is very popular in the Kyrgyz Republic. So that, so in every village, uh, a village elder or a village leader uh, monitors a WhatsApp group. So each time there's a new opportunity to participate, the World Bank basically sends out messages through those World Bank, no, through those WhatsApp groups, and uh, and uh, that's how people get to know about those opportunities to participate, and it works really well. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of Facebook ads in, in uh, available in you know in you know Kyrgyz, uh, uh, you know small villages. So and here's just an example of an of an idea. Uh, so people are basically discussing if you know. If they, what they want to improve, there's money coming from the World Bank. Should they improve the lighting? Should they, you know, improve the overall electricity grid? And you know, people have, and some people for the first time really have the chance to uh, contribute their comments, and they can contribute anonymously. So the World Bank is already seeing a, a much more inclusive uh, situation with projects uh, where often the culture is is. Uh, is maybe a bit, you know, into that the elders, they speak, you know, maybe, you know, not everybody should be speaking so much and so on. When you have online and when you have anonymous, then anybody can speak their mind. And, and they've, they've seen a really, you know, big improvement in that. And here's also using like the full on survey app as a part of your priorities. They're actually another part of the project is, you know, monitoring, uh, you know, situation with CASA 1000 and COVID. So, Every uh, every month, uh, they sent out a survey uh, to about I think twenty thousand different people, stakeholders, village leaders, and so on. And they sent out the survey through the platform, and everybody answers, and every, and then all the feedback is is organized. <laughs> and this is pretty crazy view. This is like this is like a, a recent feature in your priorities where you can actually map a whole structure of projects. 
and I know this probably looks on your screens just as some wiggly lines, but it's actually the start of the, uh, you know, World Bank Kyrgyz project where we have different villages on different levels and different uh, municipalities that are all going through the same sort of a mechanized, uh, a mechanized, I would say in this way, uh, uh, highly automated uh, way of, of, of capturing feedback from them. Um, and finally on the World Bank, uh, uh, we're working with them on a, a totally new app uh, as a part of your purchase platform. This is called a community scorecard. And, uh, and this is a new open source participatory monitoring platform. And we're piloting it for in a large healthcare project with the World Bank in Bosnia, now in April. And it's manages like six month cycles where users and service providers come together uh, to monitor and to improve public services. And it's built on the Your Purchase SDK and shares many user interface components and so on with, with your priorities. And this is a highly specific uh, a process that usually happens in, in, in live meetings and it will happen uh, and this app will basically be like an assistance to having video meetings or real live meetings uh, that go through those different steps of, of developing a scorecard, scoring the services, creating an action plan to improve the services, report on action plans and then restart the whole process again every six months. And this is like a mandate also by the World Bank of, 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 of how to monitor services. And this specifically the first project will be, um, I think, a hundred million dollar loan uh, uh, to, uh, to be rebuild the healthcare system in, in, in Bosnia. Um, State of New Jersey has used the platform uh, to uh, collect ideas from employees. There's another project starting later this year with them. And uh, we have... Uh, Nonprofits like the uh, uh, promoting economic pluralism, which is an international nonprofit creating spaces for diverse voice, you know, voices on economics. Uh, they have been using the platform for now two years, and they including like a nominations for the Not the Nobel Prize awards. Uh, they have organized conference topics. They've cho chosen speakers for the conference, um, and now they're co-creating a master's program with universities around the world. And uh, here you can see their website. Uh, uh, their platform, and they have different, uh, all sorts of different projects that are uh, uh, that are going on. They've really been innovative in using the platform, and uh, this is the latest project that they are uh, they're actually um, you know collecting together ideas for from universities uh, around the world on uh, on different uh, uh, you know approaches to uh, making sure that economics uh, master's program are you know have pluralistic uh, 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 visions and and actually this is the largest input form that anybody has created for your priorities so those are the questions the universities need to answer you know and this actually features our sort of rich text input so people can write in bold and they can make bullet points and so on and, and this is an example that you, you would not want to expose, you know, this sort of form to the regular public, you know, for, you know, for sure. But for, for a use like this, then, th then it works perfectly. Um, finally, uh, we have a school in Australia that's used your priorities once in a while over the years. And uh, sort of we, they, yeah, they just sent us an email one day and just thanked us for the platform. Anybody can create a community on your priorities, by the way. We, that's not, it doesn't cost anything if you don't have any budget. And, and they were really happy and they even, you know, sent us this photo and, and a little quote that they, uh, you know, it's a great way to vote on things you think are beneficial for the classroom. So, so, uh, so yeah, so that was good. And uh, yeah, so, uh, so that's it from my sort of last presentation of the day. Uh, here we go. And uh, so if you have, uh, you know, if you want to ask some questions, you know, we have like, you know, five or 10 minutes and then you know, we have Sophia who's going to give us a little presentation on, on the No Planet B project. But, but please, uh, Simon, do you have a question? No, next time you have raised, hand is raised. That's okay. I have a quick question, Robert, yeah. <laughs> as usual. I was just wondering, because you've had like experience with really many countries all around the world. Did you ever like encounter like cultural differences from the requests that you've had, for example, I don't know, on how they want things to be crowdsourced or anything strange like that, just out of curiosity? Yeah, well, I, you know, I mean, nothing really strange, but, but, but yes, I mean, uh, uh, 
you know, there have been, you know, different ways, for example, uh, you, you know, we have several times had this conversation about if uh, the content should be pre-moderated, you know, we basically don't really have that option <laughs> well as well. I mean, in, in, in a way, we, we really discourage that, you know, we rather, you know, promote active, uh, active, uh, 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 you know, moderation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, we did get a request, uh, uh, you know, somebody actually wanted to, uh, you know, somebody, you know, connected to, uh, uh, well, I mean, we, we get sometimes strange requests, like like somebody from the anti-COVID movement, like somebody connected to the Kennedy guy, you know, who has said like, oh, we're going to give you a bunch of money, we're going to set up a, a platform for crowdsourcing, you know, you know, anti, you know, you know, we hate the vaccines, you know, movement. But anyway, we declined that, you know, okay. idea, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, like, as you said, like about the moderation, or did you ever like have requests of censorship or, you know, I guess that if they want a pre-moderation, it's really to kind of stop maybe some uh, arguments yeah. uh, coming out uh, before it's in, pu in public eyes or things like that. Well, you know, I mean, yes, I guess so. I mean, but but in terms of, I mean, we have uh, usually our partners, as I see from a list to work with, you know, like the World Bank with UNDP, British Council and so on. So, you know, you know, those projects inherit those values that are, you know, a part of those, uh, you know, organizations, if you like, you know. Yeah, sure. So we are or, not, yeah. I mean, Maybe I, I do you think institutions are like a bit more fearful about public eye? Maybe it's not a cultural thing, but maybe, you know, bigger institutions like the Commission, the UN, the World Bank, maybe sometimes they really try to refrain more than a local mayor who is much more open to, okay, let's just have them debate. I mean, yeah, maybe, yeah, but, but we haven't really, I mean, seen that. I mean, we have, uh, I mean, luckily, I mean, with, uh, um, you know, as, as those, you know, you know, three different projects in sort of different cultures, like in Sudan and 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 mm -hmm. uh, and you know, five cities in in in, in sort of Central Africa, you know, Kyrgyz Republic. Yes, and we can definitely see the uh, different, uh, uh, you know, cultural differences. You know, and and but like interesting, like the World Bank, our you know, World Bank contacts. Uh, you know that the fact that one of the the, the the cultural thing in the Kyrgyz villages is the sort of respect for elders, you know, respect usually for the male elders, you know, like mm -hmm. that. That's like, and that's something they were a bit worried would would translate over to the online platform. That yeah. they would just like that they would not get people to actually even if they were were anonymous, but that did not happen. That we they they're really getting a big sign of getting a much more diverse set of comments from. A diverse set, like from women and uh, and so on. So so it's a you know as I say it's a it's an uh, you know it's a cultural thing in a in, in a way and uh, it, you know but uh, you know I, I think you know maybe it's surprising but I, th I think it's sort of you know we are more alike than like uh, even Icelandic culture compared to uh, Sudanese culture we are so much more alike it, when it comes to this than we would ever think. Okay, that's my okay. takeaway from it. Thanks a lot. Yes. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for your presentations. It's amazing how you manage uh, such a like diverse projects internally and also in um, other countries. So my question was more of kind of from a technical point of view. Uh, so do you have uh, what are your um, IT resources and IT support resources, and how do you is it challenging for you to May it to, to have have them when you need them as an NGO. Do you have them internally, or uh, do you outsource this uh, resource? So yeah. Yeah. So I I actually you know I mean time has been one thing. I mean uh, you you know this you know project has been very much uh, a volunteer uh, driven exercise. We had some funding from the EU and so on. So and uh, the thing is that uh, you know being sort of consulting on community work and government and so on. Um, you know, the budget involved are not often that compatible with sort of high-end IT work where you need to, uh, like, a, like if I want to hire an IT, uh, like a, a good programmer in Iceland, it would be, cost me probably, you know, 10,000 euros, you know. I mean, all the countries to get a good one, we could maybe get it for five or 6,000 euros. It's, it's, so it's, it is a challenging environment to that, you know, sense. And so, uh, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, using open source software, being able to not have to start everything from scratch, that's been one of our key elements to build on 
solutions that are already there and uh, you know be then be able to use that as a part of our solution you know and and uh, so but yeah that that is one of the big challenges uh, you know it's been eu projects you know support like from the city of reykjavik from the university of iceland and others that have sort of helped us you know through this but but we are still a really tiny uh, organization and, and like it like coding wise then at the moment it's me i'm working sort of 100 120 150 uh, percent then it's my son who's 20 who who is uh, just started the university of iceland uh, in the uh, uh, you know computer science department so uh, and uh, you know we'd love to uh, uh, you know be able to uh, uh, you know, work with more IT resources and partner with, uh, you know, people doing similar things and so on. We really believe sort of in the open source, uh, the power of open source to uh, to share and to, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope it answers the question. Yes, thank you. Right. So, Sophia, uh, so welcome to this call. Uh, so this is Code Europe. Obviously, I told you about it offline. But mm -hmm. so Sophia is going to do a you know, short presentation on our uh, on our code, uh, no, on our no planet B project. Yeah. Take it away, Sophie. Sure. 